Hello YouTube. What you're looking at is a PE6502 computer and then we've got a slight rat's nest of wires from the expansion port going into a breadboard here. On the lower right side of the breadboard as you're looking at it, that chip there or that device having a 28-pin uh, dip uh, footprint, that is a SwinSID Nano, a hardware uh, clone of a SID chip, uh, which is a sound chip from the, uh, I believe it's the Moss 6581 out of a Commodore 64. Okay, and then right above it, those two uh, chips there are uh, LS74, HCT00 uh, logic chips. Okay, that small chip there is an LM382. Or is that a 386? Jeez. 386 N 3. I should know. I'm the one that put this together, but uh, all these numbers swim around in my head. Anyways, that uh, chip there is a amplifier chip. Then we've got a 74HCT04 hex inverter, and finally a 74HCT138 uh, 3 to 8 bit encoder chip. And uh, what that comprises is our first uh, attachment here, um, which is I wanted to make a, a SID soundboard for the PE6502. Now, you see this cheesy little speaker here, and I had to borrow my Radio Shack Learning Lab for the 10K potentiometer, and uh, that speaker uh, was a very inexpensive speaker. Um, I'm not sure if the speaker or the way I'm currently prototyping the amplifier, and plus a breadboard's kind of noisy. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is this is very early on in development. So hopefully you won't be dissuaded by the sound quality, but I typed in a little program out of the Commodore 64 manual. Um, <laughs> you hear the noise when I type this. Uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't even know what you'd call that. Um, but um, the deal is, is uh, when I designed uh, the board here, I wanted to use the same address decoding that a Commodore 64 uses in order to talk to the SID chip. In fact, um, Jack Tremiel, I believe, or Tremel, I'm um, not sure I'm pronouncing his last name right, but he was the owner uh, of the Commodore 64 and he was a very um, savvy businessman. He licensed the basic language one time that he used for uh, all of the Commodore computers, starting with the PET. Um, he licensed that basic and then as his computers evolved to the Commodore 64 um, and they had like a more advanced sound chip, more advanced um, graphics chip, he was able to use the same basic because they never baked in uh, keywords in the basic language um, to make sounds and graphics like an Apple II um, does or, or any other computer that I can think of off the cuff here. Um, they used poke uh, and to send um, specific uh, numbers to uh, memory locations and the memory locations were uh, mapped directly uh, to the SID chip. In this case I use the same memory address um, for the SID. So uh, what the PE6502 is doing is it's um, it's uh, expansion bus, especially the address lines and the data lines are just simply running. And I'm also grabbing the power ground in uh, plus five volts uh, to power this uh, little breadboard here, which ultimately I'll get all the bugs wrinkled out of it and I'll make uh, circuit boards and you can buy one as a kit. Um, but anyways, um, that's connecting to um, the glue logic, the two 7400 chips, the 7404 hex inverter, and also that uh, 74138. What that does is anytime you send something to the machine language um, 
uh, address D400, um, which happens to be, if you do it in decimal, that's 54272, then the PE6502 sends whatever you're trying to poke to that address over its expansion bus through those wires to um, the glue logic here, which says, hey, wake up, Sid Chip, that here's something coming for you, right? And, um, and that's basically how it works. It's essentially as if we had crammed a sound chip on the uh, PE6502 itself. But anyways, that's uh, real quick how uh, we've added um, some hardware to our computer using the expansion bus. So enough of me jibber jabbering. Um, remember, this is going to sound bad because this is an early prototype. It's on a noisy breadboard. I got the world's cheapest slash crappiest speaker. That's not even a paper cone. That's like real thin plastic. Um, anyways, uh, that's my disclaimer. I'm going to type run here. Again, I got this program out of the Commodore 64 manual. It's like one of the first example programs on how to use uh, SID chip. And uh, let's, uh, let's listen. Again, it sounds kind of cheesy, kind of bad, but um, you know what? Uh, this is like the first 10 minutes that I've had it running, so um, we'll do uh, some more shakeout, and I'll film it, and I'll bring you guys along with me. But remember, at the end of this uh, breadboarding process, just like when I made the PE6502 itself, at the end, we'll have another product that we can add to our computer, and then uh, who knows what's next. I've had requests to make a tape interface which I think would be a lot of fun. Um, I'd personally like to make a video card so we could have some like Nintendo-ish graphics. Um, I think that that would be cool. I also need to make a backplane so we can use that CFFA1 uh, compact flash hard drive attachment that another vendor makes and sells that works with both Apple One and Replica One computers and uh, the guy that sells it says that uh, we could also use it with the PE6502. Um, so that would be cool as well. But for now, I'll make uh, some improvements on the sound card. That's me just running one voice and not doing a very good job of it, but just showing that the sound card concept does work. So it's going to be refined and improved from here and uh, stay tuned for the next episode where hopefully I'll show a much more uh, competent uh, sound card implementation. Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.